You might be wondering why I'm taking the time to cover fair game since this is mainly a horror channel. But have you seen Billy Baldwin act? Sorry, couldn't help myself. Fair Game, 1986, is being released by Dark Star Pictures. The Australian film gained some fans after Quentin Tarantino said he used the film as the inspiration for his Death Proof segment of Grindhouse. So while this is a very much a gritty, outback action flick, the revenge flick is a sibling of the horror genre, so I feel it fits right in. So let's rev up our engines, tie down your kangaroos, and play with 1986's Fair Game. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below, share this video with all of your social media addicted pals, click subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell for notifications. Fair Game is new in select theaters, on demand, and digital download from Dark Star Pictures. It's directed by Mario Andreaccio and written by Rob George. I'm not sure why Fair Game is being re-released into theaters and on demand, but I'm sure glad they did. There's something about exploitation flicks that work on levels so many others don't. The beautiful yet untamed landscape filled with the same kind of people. While films like Wake in Fright and Road Warrior were already released by 1986, one can tell director Mario Andreaccio was influenced by those flicks. It's also quite apparent that the filmmaker was influenced by some American films as well, with definite nods towards Spielberg's duel as a chance meeting of two vehicles is the matchlight for this powder keg of a movie, and one of the bad guy's trucks has a shark head painted on it, reminiscent of Jaws. There's also a structural similarity to the rape-revenge flicks like Last House on the Left and I Spit on Your Grave at play throughout. Fair Play is about a plucky owner of a wildlife preserve named Jessica, played by Cassandra Delaney, who has a chance encounter with a trio of kangaroo poachers on the road. After running her off the road, she encounters them later at a gas station, and basically the film turns into the two parties, one upping the ante on the revenge they take upon one another until things get extremely deadly. Those fearing a grindhousey and grungy rape revenge flick need not worry. There is an assault, and it is quite hard to watch as the trio of guys torment a lone woman. I've never liked the rape-revenge genre and was prepping myself for the worst, but the film never steps too far into that territory. Instead, like Duel, the escalation of violence actually is caused by actions taken by both Jessica and the poachers. Yes, the initial shots were first made by these three skeevy hunters, but had Jessica not sought revenge immediately after being run off the road, the problems might have stopped there. These two parties keep running into one another, and if you step back, things aren't as black and white as many films this one might fall into line with in the revenge subgenre. I love the fact that this occurs, painting both parties with feelings of revenge and building them to a fever's pitch. Eventually, it's simply a fight for survival, and it's not mattering who started it as blood is on both parties' hands. Don't get me wrong, the poachers are the worst of the worst kind of people. Two scurvy punks, Ringo, played by David Sandberg, and Sparks, played by Gary Who, look like rejects from a Billy Idol video, but each exhibit distinct characteristics. Sanford is quite agile and seems to do most of his own stunt work, some of which is dangerous as he leaps on the hood of moving cars and then onto rooftops with the grace and agility of a circus performer. Who plays Sparks, whose sleaze matches Sanford's grace as he truly is a greasy monster, fixing up Jessica's damage to their vehicles and property almost as fast as she destroys it. But it's Peter Ford's Sonny who is the most complex character of the bunch. He's the leader of the crew and looks like a typical leading man slash great white hunter. He's charming to Jessica at first, who is receptive to his good looks and manners before she realizes he was the one driving the car that just ran her off the road. Sonny also acts as tamer for the other two rogues, but himself has a wild and dangerous side once provoked. This nuance is especially contrasted as he meets his fate in the end of the movie. 
But the shining star is Cassandra Delaney as Jessica. She's a powerhouse actress, full of piss and vinegar, and never letting anyone one her up. Yes, she could have and should have just walked away from this trouble, but damn it if it isn't satisfying to see her get her revenge. With a wild mess of hair and a tendency of wearing anything but an oversized shirt and a belt, she's as gorgeous as can be. She reminds me of Linda Hamilton from the first Terminator, able to be feminine and attractive, but also tough as nails. The most notable aspect of Fair Game is the scene where Jessica is bound to the hood of the poacher's truck like a hunting prize. It's demeaning and horrifying, but also the point of no return for both parties. While Tarantino aped this for Death Proof, it really is the only similarity between these two films. While I liked Death Proof, it doesn't hold a candle to Fair Game's pure and savage brutality. The music may feel like dated stock synth, but the sound design of the truck's revving engine sounds like a roaring tiger and gives it a deadly character all its own. Still, with so much horror feeling off or lacking bite these days, it's refreshing to see this classic grindhouser unearthed and re-represented. Do yourself a favor and check out this dynamic action revenge flick. They don't make them as gritty and gnarly as this anymore, and that's a shame. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be Stuck inside your reality You're Yeah.